hip-hop homeless outreach program in 1988. I was living in the original Justice VX 6 and Gladys. This was spring of 1985. Homelessness was becoming an issue. Ted, Harry Rogers, and a bunch of other guys were there. Harry Rogers came out of prison and really did a lot to raise the issues of homelessness on Skid Row. Go get a job, go get a job. Hey, wait a minute, look around. All these people up here that's running these missions. Fred Jordan was still around, we had Martha Brown Hicks, we had Andy Robeson, we had Maxine Johnson. Know what they were doing? They were hiring folks that already had places to stay, but they telling the homeless folks, go get a job. So my thing was, wait a minute. The only thing we know well is homelessness. So why don't we get some of them their good jobs you all got? And if y'all so damn smart, Y'all can find a job somewhere else! Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. For everybody that knows me, uh, this, is, this is a hell of a moment because I can't talk. <laughs> all I can say is, 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 is thank you. That's all. Thank you! Okay, so, uh, hi, I'm uh, John Malpe from LA Poverty Department. That was um, part of uh, our epic performance, which was 36, it was like 36 stops in three days of parades around the Skid Row neighborhood of LA uh, to tell the stories of the people, of the activists, the artists, the people who've uh, made it the biggest recovery community anywhere, um, who, have, who have held on, you know, uh, and kept that low-income neighborhood in existence despite being in the shadow of the high-rise downtown. Like people who watch car commercials and, uh, and uh, the bold and the beautiful have probably seen that skyline on television. Um, Skid Row is like just east of that. So it's like, uh, it's like some mountain in Kentucky if you could just take the top off of it and get rid of the long-standing low-income residential community there which has the most affordable housing in Los Angeles, you could make gazillions of dollars, right? So. Over the last 40 years, people living and working in that area, activists, people, homeless people, people living in, uh, in the hotels there, have resisted you know, uh, getting displaced. So time and time again, the neighborhood has come together in order to uh, fight the biggest powers in Los Angeles. I'm talking about the mayor, I'm talking about the city council, I'm talking about the developers, the LA Times, of course. And, uh, and so this is, this is a very, uh, amazing, amazing uh, story. And uh, so in these three days of parades, we went around and uh, told the story of these different groups. So Mike Neely was, was uh, one of those people. The other people he mentioned, like Harry Rogers, Ted Hayes, all those people, we went to the spots where, where Justiceville had happened, which was an encampment uh, that was finally dispersed by the police, of course, uh, 25 years ago. And, uh, and we told the story of the resistance and the, and the really invigoration of the community because it's only gotten stronger in, uh, over, this, over this period. It's the, um, Skid Row Los Angeles, you know, it the, has the highest concentration of homeless people in the United States in a 55 square block area, block area. but it also, you know, has, so, so any night there's about two or 3,000 people living out on the streets. There's about 10,000 people living in hotels and two or 3,000 uh, living in transitional programs. About 40 years ago, there was, uh, there was a plan to do what they did on Bunker Hill, which is completely raise everything, get rid of the most affordable housing in Los Angeles. And uh, some activists uh, from the Catholic Worker, where I used to volunteer when I first got out to LA, the Legal Aid Foundation, where I worked for four years, and, uh, and uh, the Community Design Center, they came out with their own plan, and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's save this 55 blocks that has 65 hotels with the cheapest rent in LA, and move uh, services in there, and then you can knock down other stuff, you know? So, Lo and behold, it was amazing, but that actually passed, and that became the, uh, the plan, the development plan, and it still is today. 
So that was a huge victory. Of course, guess what? Just because, just because a victory was won one day, that doesn't mean that uh, people aren't gonna make, try and make a and run around that to again, get at the land, get displaced the people who live there, right? So since then, it's been a constant, it's been a constant struggle to keep that place intact. And um, in the course of that, like I said, it's become, it's become uh, stronger and better. Um, there have been, you know, there've been a variety of, every time there's a real estate boom, basically, you know, feverish minds get really, really excited about what else can we do to this neighborhood. And uh, I always say we're only the second most uh, effective uh, political theater with the call letters LAPD, because the, um, the police department has been deployed time and time again by the, by the um, powers that be to, to, to criminalize uh, poverty in the neighborhood. So 65 times as many jaywalking tickets are written in Skid Row as are written in any other part of the city. If you don't pay that 150 bucks, the next time you get uh, stopped, you go to jail, right? So the, the, the neighborhood has come together many times to save the housing. Uh, the housing, again, even though this plan was in place, there were clever people who figured out ways to run around it. It was only through uh, LA CAN, LA Community Action Network, organizing the community that, um, that eventually prevented a lot of this uh, you know, dubious, basically illegal dealing from going on. Um, <laughs> Such a beautiful history, you know. So, so, um, so our performance told that history. Just last month, um, the 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 city was again told you, you can't just go down the street and pick up everyone's shit and throw it in the dumpster. You know, the, they lost a court hearing again for uh, they've, for unreasonable search and seizure. They've lost others for. Um, cruel and unusual uh, punishment by not, not allowing homeless people to lie down on the street. Um, this happens in LA, of course it happens everywhere else. But uh, again, the resilience of this community, the leadership within the community has kept it getting stronger in the face of all the powers of Los Angeles. Take that. <laughs>